will not take us to heaven. You see? If anything, men will perish if, if they're not obeying the Lord, if they're not following God's commandments. You see? So he says, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. Verse 3. He answered and said to them, you see, now Jesus answered them. Jesus, who's the word of God, who's God himself, answered them. This is what he says. Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? You see what Jesus is saying? God's commandment. God's commandment. There's a difference between man-made tradition. Man-made tradition. In other words, man-made laws. There's a difference between man-made laws and God's laws, God's commandments. You see, there's when a man says, do this, do this, do this, but it's not God saying that, but they're saying that. And then versus when God himself says, I want you to do this. When God says, do this, there's life in it when you do it. But if we don't do it, you know what that means. It's the opposite because the word of God is life, you see, and it's the light of man. So, so Jesus says, why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? You see, they did not choose God's commandment, but instead chose the tradition of man above God. Sound familiar? Isn't that what people are doing today? Instead of choosing God's commandments, God's laws to obey, they're choosing the tradition of men, what men are teaching them, things that are outside of scripture. Things that are not even Bible. Things that are not even scripture. That's what they're teaching people. And then that's what people are following. But they refuse. But then they refuse to teach the people God's commandments. You see? Because, they, because, because they, they, their heart. Because of where their heart is. You see? See, see, see? The heart is supposed to be in what is the most important. What in the end will save us. In the end, what will save our soul is the word of God. You see, the one that creates us is the one that dictates how things are to go. He's the king. That's what the Bible says. He's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Jesus is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. That means he, he, he overrules everything. You see? He's greater than all. He's above all things. See, he's above the tradition of men. You see? His word, God's word is above all things. Because through the word, everything was made. And, and through the word is life. In the word of God is life. Without the word of God, there's no life. You see? Those people that were teaching the tradition of men, instead of teaching, teaching God's word, if it wasn't for the word of God, they would not exist. If it wasn't for God, they would not even be alive. To even teach the tradition that they were teaching. The, word, the, the, the commandments that they were teaching. You see? So... Again, the Lord Jesus says, why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God commanded, you see, now he's telling them God's commands. Not the tradition, not what the man was teaching. Now he's telling them what God is saying, for, which is the most important. For God commanded, saying, honor your father and your mother. And he who curses his father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever whatever profit you might have received, whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God. Then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. You see, so they take that tradition, they put it. They they, they this is what Jesus is saying. They take men's tradition, in other words, men's commands. And then they put it and and, 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 and put it and, and put it in God's word and change God's word. You can't change God's word, but they come and give them another word, another commandment. They they know what God is saying, but they bring their own teachings into, into it. They bring their own teachings into the mix. And so and so what, what their own teaching does, it, it, it corrupt, it corrupt what God was saying. What God was saying, they change it. You can't change God's word, but they give them another teaching, another doctrine. They, they change, they go and, 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 and causes the people not to obey God because they, they come with some another doctrine, another teaching that goes against what God is saying. You see, 
That's what the devil did to Adam and Eve. He comes with another, another word, another teaching, and it goes against what God was saying, and that's how Adam and Eve fell. You see? So that's what's happening here. You see, they, they, the, you see, the Bible is, is what the Bible is saying about the command. How God said to honor, He says, honor your father and your mother. And who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. That's what the scripture says. But then Jesus says, but then you say, in other words, them in their, the, 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 those people in their traditions, the Pharisees with their tradition, with what they're teaching, this is what they're saying. But you say, Jesus says, but you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God. Then he need not honor his father or mother. You see? See? So what they had to give to the mother or the father, they don't give it to, to, to the father or the mother. So you see, that's why he says, then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus, you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Then he says, hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth. You see, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You see? So you see, you see what, what, what the Lord is saying? The Lord is saying those people, because they were appointed to teach the people God's commandments, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the scribes, they were appointed to teach the people of God, the Israelites, the, the Israel, the Jews, the people of God, they were appointed to teach them God's word, to lead them uh, uh, to God's word so they can have eternal life. But instead of teaching them God's word, they were teaching as doctrines the commandments of men, which is what I was saying before. They were teaching the commandments of men. Pay close attention to what Jesus just said. He said they were teaching not God's commandments, but the commandments of men. You see? And so because that's what they were doing, then Jesus says their heart is far from him. Their heart is far from God. You see? Because it's not God they were teaching. It's not God's word they were teaching, but the word of men. Men's commandments, which has no power to take nobody into heaven. Because the only, the only, the only, the only one that have power to take us into heaven is Christ Jesus himself, who is the word of God. So the word of, that's what the Bible says, in him is life. In the word of God is life. So the commandments of God, in the commandments of God, which is the word of God, is life. You see? So that's what they were, they were supposed to teach. But that's not what they're teaching. They're teaching men's commandments, the tradition of men, talking about not uh, um, washing your hands before you eat, you know, you know. And if you, in other words, if you don't do that, it makes you, you know, if you don't do that, then, then something wrong. You're breaking the, the, the law of, of, of the elders, the, the tradition. Instead of focusing on the word of God, what God's commandment is for the people to follow, they're focusing on the commandments of men. That sounds very familiar. That's how it is today. Today you have people teaching people, men doctrine, men philosophies, psychologies, ideologies, Men precepts, men, men made notions, men made way of thinking, instead of teaching God's doctrine. You see, God had a reason for saying this in Isaiah 55 when he said, My ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. You see, in other words, the way we think and our ways, the way we think, our words, is not necessarily the way God thinks. Because God's way is higher than our ways. His thoughts is higher than our thoughts. You see? So what we think, what, what we think men ought to do, you see, when we are making judgments and, and not using God's word, is gonna be our own thoughts. You know? And God is saying, This is not the way. This is not the way to heaven. This is not the way to eternal, life, to, to eternal life. It's not our word that is the way to eternal life. It's not what we think that is the way to eternal life. But it's what he thinks. Because he's God. He's the one that created us. He's, heaven belongs to him. You see? You see? He's the one that, that has a say on, 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 uh, on, on, on heaven. You know? On how to inherit heaven. Because that is his heaven. He made it. He's his kingdom. You know? And he made us. So he determines what laws we ought to follow. You see? He determines what commandments 
And so when you listen, when you look, you see men have their own commandments, you know. And then sometimes their commandments they have goes against God's commandments. Just like you see here, where you have the Pharisees' commandments, which comes from, they say, come from the tradition of the elders, goes against God's commandments. And that's what they're teaching the people, you see. So we have to be careful that we are not teaching people doctrines of men. Doctrine that has no power, you know. You know, doctrine that has no power. The doctrines that has power, that's what God wants us to teach. You know, because in his doctrines, in his word is life. In the commandments of God is life, you see. So he says, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Their heart was far from God because their heart was not even about God's word. They were not concerned with the commandments of God. They were concerned with the commandments of man, the doctrines of man, just like it is today. It's like that today where you see people are not concerned. Some people, there are people, they are not concerned so much with the commandments of God, but are very concerned with the commandments of men. They're very concerned with what men are saying. You know, they're very quick to obey and follow what men are saying, but very slow to obey what God is saying. You see, and yet what God is saying and what he's saying is life, eternal life. That's, that's what saves us. You see, because we need to be saved. You know, we on this earth, you know, for a time. You see, we, our soul needs to be saved. You see, the Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the, of the glory of God, but are justified freely by the grace that came by Christ Jesus. Or that we are justified freely by the grace that came to the, the redemption of Christ Jesus. You see, so we all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. That means we need to be saved from our sins. We all need to be saved because we have all sinned. You see, our souls need to be saved. And the Bible tells you we are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus, who is the word of God. We are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus, who is the word of God. You see, so that means we have to go through Christ, through the word of God to be saved. Through God's commandments, which is Christ Jesus. We have to go through the commandments of God which is Christ Jesus again to be saved, you see. So that is what we need to be concerned about because we need to be saved. And those who are, whose souls are not saved, they go to hell, you see. So God is concerned about our soul. That's why he says that is his most important, what is most concerning for God is our us, where we end up at in the, in the end. He, wants, he doesn't want us to perish. That's why he says, what good is, that's why he says in the Bible, Jesus says, what good is it if a man gains the whole world but loses his soul? You see? All the time he's, he's concerned about our soul. You know? That's why many times, that's why, that's why his word, he wants us to guard his word in our heart. Because it's through his word that we will have eternal life. You see? So, so you see, he says, he, he, this is, that's what he says. He says, the, the heart is far from him because what they're teaching is not his word, is not his commandments, but they're teaching the commandments of men. You see, now when you go to verse 10, then the scripture says, When he had called the multitude to himself, when Jesus Christ had called the multitude of the people that was there listening to him, when he had called them to himself, he said to them, Hear and understand, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a man. He's talking about the, the thing that the, the Pharisees was teaching. The tradition of men, the men commandments that they were teaching. They were saying, oh, wash your hands. You got to wash your hands before you eat. You know? And so Jesus was saying to them, hear and understand. It's not what goes into your mouth that defile you, but it's what comes out. It's not what, in other words, eating with unwashed hands. When you eat with your hands, it's not clean, but you eat with it. That don't make you unclean. That's why he says, it's not what goes into your mouth that makes you unclean. Or that's not what defile you, but what defile a man is what comes out. It's not what goes into the mouth, but what comes out. Verse 12. Then he says, now he's teaching them the commandments of God, you know, versus what the, the, the Pharisees were teaching. Then he says, then his disciples came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard the saying? But he answered and said, Every plant, you see, they're, they're offended because their laws, they're, they're, they're concerned for the tradition of the elders. Their concern is men's commandments. So when people are not following, when the people are not following their commandments, or uh, they're not happy, they're not pleased. 
You see? Because that's where their heart is. Their heart is in their own commandments, not in God's commandments. You see? So that's why they were not pleased when they heard Jesus said what he said. And Jesus is the word of God. You see? So, and the word of God is above all things. You see? And the Bible says, Then his disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were, not, were offended when they heard the saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. In other words, leave them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. You see? You see, you see what he's saying? He's saying that those people that are teaching the doctrines of man instead of doctrines of God. You see what he's saying here? The Pharisees, because they were teaching... They were teaching the doctrines of men where they were appointed when they were they actually were appointed to teach the doctrines of God because that's the position they were given by God because they were they they are from the Lev Levitical priesthood, you know they come from the the line of Aaron, you see that's what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to teach the doctrines of God to uh, prepare God's people for heaven so God's people can enter heaven. But instead they they're teaching the doctrines of men, men's commandments, so they're not feeding the sheep. You know, they're not teaching them the right way, the, the, the commandments of God, what they're supposed to teach the people so they can go to heaven. So, so then the Lord says they're blind guides. You know, they're blind guides, they're blind guides, and the people that are following them is also blind. You see, because they don't see that what, the, what they're teaching them is not the truth, is not God's doctrine, but men made doctrine which has no power to save soul. So then he says. Uh, they're both blind, the, the, the leader and the ones following the leader. says that they're both blind because the leader's teaching is, teaching is not God's teaching, it's not God's word. And then the people following them is also not following God's word because they're following their teachings. So they're both blind. And he says, leave them alone. And he says, and he says if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch because neither one can see. You see? See, the, the one, the people listening to them is blind, but the, the also them also, that's teaching them the false doctrine, the doctrine of men is also blind. You see, and Jesus says, uh, um, every plant which my father have not planted will be uprooted. You see, uh, that means that, that means that if, 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 if God has not planted them, they will be uprooted. In other words, the word that they're preaching, uh, the doctrine that they're preaching is not God's doctrine. So that means it was not God that planted them, you see, you know, because it's not God's word that they're preaching. So they will be uprooted. You see, that's why the Bible talks about the kingdom of God and, and, and how in the end, that's the kingdom that will stand. And the other kingdoms will be uprooted because what the other kingdoms are teaching are not God's principles or not God's word and God's commandments. What they're teaching is the doctrine and the commandments of men. In the end, they will be uprooted. Because they were not planted by God. And when God plants, he plants with his word. You see, that's the seed, the word of God, Jesus Christ. So if it's not Jesus that is planted, then whatever that, then that doctrine and the people that push that doctrine, that doctrine will be uprooted. You see, that's why when you go to the book of Galatians, the book of Galatians, let us go to the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians. What does Galatians say? Galatians. The book of Galatians. 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 Okay, Galatians. Galatians. Galatians chapter 1. I marvel, I marvel, I marvel, that's Paul saying that, uh, uh, Paul saying that, of course, that's the word of God, because the word of God was given to us by the Holy Spirit through also God's chosen holy apostles. So the Galatians chapter 1, and he's saying, the word is saying, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. In other words, he's, he, they're turning away from the, he marvels because they're turning away from the word of God that came by Christ Jesus, the truth. 
He's marveling at them because they're turning away from the truth. They're going to other doctrines, man-made doctrines, philosophies, ideologies, false doctrines. They're going. To, they they not they not guarding their hearts. You see, they're not hiding the word of God in their hearts. So he's saying, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from Him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. You see, there are some who trouble God's people and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. You see, they want to uh, change it. You know, they want to uh, do things to it to 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 uh, to take the word of God from their hearts. You see, and so he's raising a red flag. He's raising a warning there, and he says, "But even if we." You see what the, the pastor Paul said? God's chosen holy apostle, Pastor Paul. Look what he, he says in the word of God. He says, but even if we, see, even mentioning himself, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. The, uh, the other version of the scripture says, let him be eternally condemned. Whoever is preaching a gospel apart from the gospel that we have heard from the beginning, the gospel of Christ Jesus, the written gospel that we read in the Bible from the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the way to the book of Revelation. If there's someone that is preaching another gospel, a gospel that is different from that gospel, even that even if that element is a man or an angel, the Bible says, the word of God warns, let that person be eternally condemned. That person, let that person be accursed. You see? You see? That is a warning. That is, that is a judgment against those who are not preaching the word of God as it is written in the Bible. Who are not preaching that, but instead going about preaching another gospel. That in the sight of God is wickedness. That is in the sight of God is what Jesus was saying in the Bible is that the people, they draw themselves to God, acting like they're preaching God's word, acting like that they're teaching God's word, they're teaching the people the way of God, but instead they're teaching the people the doctrine of man. You see? And not God's doctrine that comes from the word of God. You see? So he's saying when the people are doing, when people are doing that, their heart is far from him. Because they're not focusing on God's commandments. That's how we know where our heart is, if our heart is close to God or is far from God. If we are, if we are focusing on what is written, on the commandments of God, as, it's, as, it's written, as it is written in the Bible, and we're doing them, then our heart is close with God. We're not far from God. We're close to Him because we are, we are very close to Him. As a matter of fact, we are in Him and He's in us because we are abiding in His Word. But if... If if somebody if somebody is 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 not teaching the gospel of Christ Jesus the gospel when I say gospel of Christ Jesus the one that is written the one we read about that is written for us to follow you see that is the standard that is what God left us with you see that's why everywhere you go if somebody is preaching God's word you gotta have your Bible. You see, you gotta come from the Bible. You cannot preach things, and you gotta whatever you're preaching has to line up with the Bible. Has to have the Bible, the Word of God, as its foundation. Otherwise, it is not the Word of God. You see. So that's what the Bible warns us. The Word of God says there's no other doctrine. You see, when when the Pharisees came preaching another doctrine, God, Jesus rebuked them and says that they were not planted by God. In other words, in the end, they will be uprooted because what they're teaching is not God's commandments. But they're teaching their own man-made doctrines, which has no power to save any of those souls. In other words, they're leading those people to hell. You know, that's where they're leading them. So that means they're going to be judged for that, you know, because, because, uh, uh, because that is sin. That is sin to mislead people, to deceive people. That's Satan does that. You see, when he comes, he lies to people and give them another direction. Instead of giving them the gospel, the word of God, he gives them another another word, another gospel that is not the gospel at all. That has no power to save. You see, so when people are doing that, they are following after the similitude, after the character of Satan. 
So that means then they're going to bear the, the judgment, you know, of God for doing so. That's why he says they will be uprooted. When he says uprooted, that means they will be thrown into the fire. You see, uprooted, you see. So that's why we got to be careful when we're preaching the gospel uh, uh, that what we're preaching has to be lined up with the Bible, you know. And, and that's how we know we love the sheep, that we love the people. It's when you tell the people the truth. You know, when we tell the people the word of God that is written, that's how we know we, we, we love them because we're telling them what is true. We're not lying to them. You see? So, so that's what it says. It says right here, it says, it says, it says, let, let me read it again. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel, you see, but even if we, that means it doesn't matter who it is. As long as they're not preaching the gospel, what is written, for the, they're not preaching the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the word of God that is in the Bible. This is what the Bible says about that. This is what the word of God says about that. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, then what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. You see, as we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you, then what you have received, let him be accursed. You see, that is the warning for people that are teaching uh, or preaching a gospel that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Leading people in a direction that is not going to take them to heaven, but to hell, because the only... Uh, the only one that takes you to heaven is Christ Jesus, the Word of God. That's the only way to heaven. It's through the Word of God that we read in the Bible. Christ Jesus. That's why it was written for us to know what, what, who the Word is and what the Word says. So we can follow it. So now, when you go to um, back to Matthew 15, in continuation of what we're reading there, you find that then, then in verse 15... This is what Peter was saying to Jesus. Then Peter answered and said to him, Explain this parable to us. He's talking about when Jesus says, Hear and understand. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out. Because the, the, the Pharisees was, were talking about what comes into the man. Because they were saying, Oh, if you don't wash your hands, and then you eat with unclean hands, in other words, that's going to make you unclean also. So they're talking. the Pharisees was talking about what goes inside. You know, but Jesus is saying, no, it's not what goes inside that makes a man unclean, but it's what comes out that defiles a man, that makes a man unclean. In other words, unholy, you see. So let us read. Let us continue. Read. Then Peter answered and said to him, explain this parable to us. Explain it. The parable where he says, what comes in, don't make us unclean, it's what comes out. So Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not un yet do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile a man. You see, Jesus explained to you why what comes out of a man's mouth what is why is what comes out of a man's mouth is def, is what defiles them it's because what comes out of their mouth comes from the heart you see and then in the heart there's there's they have uncleanliness in the heart there's these evils that have that they have in the heart and then when they let it out through their mouth by speaking it it makes them unclean it makes them unholy that for example somebody like like he's gonna he's gonna say let us read it says but those things which proceed out of the mouth Come from the heart and they defile a man. Let us read it again. He says, Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? Do you not understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth, those things that come out of the mouth, in other words, come from the heart, they come from the heart, and they defile a man, they make a man unclean, they make a man unholy, you see, you know, so he's going to explain to you why, for out of the heart 
proceed evil thoughts. You see? For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemy, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. To, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. See, that's what the Lord taught them. See, and so he's, he's basically telling you it's about the heart. It's all about the heart. That's why the Bible is telling us in Proverbs 4.23, to guard the heart. Watch the heart. You know. For it's the wellspring of life. For out of it proceedeth the, the issues of this life. You see. So it's telling you. The, the things. You see. You, we have to guard the heart. We have to protect it. We have to guard it to make sure. That the evil that is in the heart. Does not come out of the mouth. You see. For example. Uh, 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 evil thoughts. We have to make sure the evil thoughts does not come out of the mouth. Because if it does, it makes the man unclean. You see? The murders, you see? Make sure it does not come out of the mouth. Or whichever way. Because it makes the man unclean. Adulteries. Fornications. Thefts. False witness. We have to make sure false witness or lies does not come out of the mouth. Because it makes the man unclean. Blasphemies, we have to make sure that it does not come out of the mouth because it defiles a man and makes the man unholy. You see, that's what he's saying. He says, These are the things which defile a man, and also slender. You see, slender also. You see, we have to make sure it does not come out because it makes a man unclean. You see, it defiles a man, it makes a man unholy, and it comes from the heart and it comes out to the mouth. You see, he says, these are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. You see, so this is the conclusion of today's message. May the Lord bless you. Shalom.